the once every four years Iowa caucuses. We're all watching what happens there because so much rides on the people of Iowa. Iowa packs a big political punch. Iowa caucus voters do care about who's going to win in November. If you win this election, yep. you change the rules of modern American politics. That's what's on the line tomorrow night. I'm telling you, Keith, history, this is Lexington and Concord. This is going around the world right now. They said this day would never come. The holiday season overlaps the campaign season. Iowa holds its Republican caucuses one week from tomorrow. The latest poll shows a three-way race right now. Ron Paul favored by 21 percent of voters. Mitt Romney, 20 percent. And Newt Gingrich right behind at 19. Ron Paul is now leading in Iowa, 23 to 20. He is now second place in New Hampshire. He is rising. Today's Des Moines Register asks a very valid question. Could Ron Paul win? Ron Paul wins. Some Republicans are going to say, who cares about Iowa? Ron Paul winning Iowa itself would not matter very much. If Ron Paul wins, then, then what? Then Iowa go to, does, then Iowa go to New Hampshire Iowa and does, start from scratch. Iowa, Iowa doesn't matter. So maybe Ron Paul wins Iowa, but who cares? If Iowa took him seriously and Iowans took him seriously, maybe we shouldn't take Iowa all that seriously. If Ron Paul wins Iowa, we just take it out. Come on, come on. <laughs> so now you're telling me that before you were telling me Ron Paul had no chance of winning. I thought <laughs> Ron Paul would a kook with a crank. <laughs> he's not going to win, Ron Paul. <laughs> oh, he's going to win? Well, then it doesn't count. If he wins Iowa, what we were previously telling you about how important Iowa is, forget that. Now Iowa is irrelevant. So now that it looks like for the first time uh, Ron Paul might actually have a shot at winning Iowa, all of a sudden the establishment has changed their mind on how important Iowa was. Remember, before it was like, oh, the Iowa caucus, whoever wins the Iowa caucus, that's the real deal, that's the most important thing. Obama won the Iowa caucus and then that gave him momentum and he won the whole thing. The establishment is so deathly afraid of Ron Paul that any time that he has got any advantage, they look to minimize it and obliterate it. First, when he was coming in uh, third in some of these uh, polls that said they're like, oh, he's just a fringe guy. He comes in third. He's not going to make anything of him. Second, oh, it doesn't count. It's Ron Paul. He's got a lot of active supporters on the ground. When Obama had a lot of active supporters on the ground, they were like, look at Obama. Here comes Obama. Ron Paul, irrelevant. You tell a guy that even if he wins, even if he comes in number one, not only is it not count, not only is it are the all important Iowa caucus become irrelevant, but that the voters who just voted uh, didn't mean it. It's absurd. Anytime anybody else wins, they go, oh, look at that. They've got real momentum. They excite people on the ground. The whole reason Obama won the primary was because he did so well in Iowa. And the national press made a huge stink out of it. And I think they were right to. Now when Ron Paul's about to win, ah, no. It's perverting the process to actually win the caucus. These quotes are mind-blowing. These people are, they're scared to death of Ron Paul. Look at how much the establishment is scared to death of Ron Paul. They're like, oh, damn, the doctor is coming. And he's going to throw, he's going to overturn our apple cart and say, no, 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 you don't get to take money anymore and just do the bidding of your donors. And it's about his effect on this endemic corruption that they're all hooked on. They're like, no, 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 don't take the IV drip off, Dr. Paul. Don't do it. We're hooked on that money that we get because we're all corrupt sellout politicians. Rick Santorum, he'll keep it going. Rick Perry, Mitt Romney, all those other guys, who cares? They'll keep it going. Don't do it to us, doctor. Why are you winning? Why are you perverting the process by winning? The more I read this stuff, the more I think, hey, you know what? <laughs> Maybe it's time to take our chances with Dr. Ron Paul. Millions of tax dollars are spent on this type of computer surveillance, a disgusting procedure for a professed free society. They're overstepping the bound. Just the other day, they walked into somebody's house. They suspected he was a drug dealer. He was using his automatic selector, and that police marched in, and they said, it looked like a gun after they killed the man. In America! Is that what America is all about? I'd say no. We want privacy. Let's govern for individual liberty, get the government off our backs, a more sensible foreign policy. Uh, I'm very disappointed that so far in this Congress we have not yet seen any sincere effort 
to cut any spending. There's something wrong here that could and should be adjusted with decreased spending, not raising taxes, and not further robbing the Social Security Trust Fund. The more we threat, the more we intimidate, the more we want to bomb people, the more we're leading into another fiasco like Vietnam. We trade with Vietnam now. That's a much better way than trying to impose our will on Vietnam by going over there and dropping bombs. So I would say that uh, this just points out again that we have a very, very poor foreign policy in the Middle East. I wish the Congress would address the uncontrolled institutionality of presidents waging war. That, to me, is a lot more serious than uh, Monica Lewinsky, let me tell you. The corporations are in bed with the government. Peace and harmony can never be achieved by bombs and intimidation. Mr. Speaker, over the last uh, three to four years, I've come to the floor on numerous occasions trying to sound a warning about both our foreign policy and our monetary policy. The cause, the cause is the Federal Reserve. The cause is the pro the problem is is the Federal Reserve has been granted authority that is unconstitutional to go and counterfeit money. And until we recognize that and deal with that, we are continue we will continue to have financial problems. I do not see any reason whatsoever to take young men and young women and send them 6,000 miles off to a land to, a to attack a country that has not committed any aggression against this country. War is not popular. People get killed and body bags end up coming back. I don't want anybody's legs shot off for some reason that is not justified and it's not a declared war. I think that should be the litmus test of everybody in this country and everybody over on the hill too. If this war is worth fighting, are you willing to go and lose your legs, lose your life, or send your kids or grand send your grandkids? Will our country become freer, richer, safer, and more peaceful? Or will we continue to suffer from lost civil liberties, a stagnant economy, terrorist threats, and an expanding war in the Middle East and Central Asia? Is it not possible that George Washington's admonition to avoid entangling alliances is sound advice even today? Both candidates supported the war in Iraq and the continuation of it. Both supported the Patriot Act and its controversial attack on personal privacy. The true Patriot will repeal the Patriot Act, is what they will do. Both candidates supported increased spending in almost all categories. I'm the most conservative member here. I have voted, you know, against more spending and wasting government than anybody else. Freedom, prosperity, and peace. Just come home. We just marched in. We just come home. We have allowed our nation to be overtaxed and overregulated and overrun by bureaucrats. The founders would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. The system designed to protect individual liberty will have no punishments for any group and no, uh, no privileges. Today, I think inner city folks uh, and minorities are punished unfairly in the war on drugs. It is our job to check up and find what the Federal Reserve has done audit them and find out who their buddies are that they're taking care of. It's trillions of dollars we're spending on these wars.